here and welcome back to another one of my videos. This one, we've got a whole range of BGM Clubmans to review. Starting off, we've got here a version 3, a V4, V4 Sport unpainted, V4 Sport painted. We're going to do a review throughout the whole range of them and we're going to fit them on bike and test them. Hope you enjoy this video. Okay, here we have the uh, V3, which is the earlier model. As you can see, the brackets are less substantial. It is adjustable. And this is how they bracket with the captive nuts welded in the back. This served everybody quite well, except it was a bit noisy. But the power delivery on this exhaust was very, very good. It did rev on nicely and had a good amount of torque. Uh, everybody I think was pretty happy with this exhaust except for the brackets being a little weak and they started suffering from cracks on long journeys so they BGM in their goodwill decided to upgrade and they changed this bracket when they moved to the V4 so this bracket was changed yep okay yep so this is now the new version of the V4, the latest one. And you can see, not only have they got the reinforced brackets, the much better brackets, they've also now brazed the box with thicker plate to actually reduce uh, cracking. Braze flexes. Braze is more resistance to vibration. Braze is excellent for bracketing. As you can see on the bottom as well, They've also changed the design of the tailpipe bracket because that's obviously given them problems and it is now brazed and obviously more flexible. This, instead of cracking, now absorbs vibration. Back in the 80s, I was making exhausts for, for the track and for racing and I was selling at the CJ scooters in the West Midlands. Uh, I always brazed all my brackets brazing, triangulated brackets and brazing and they were, they were very very durable that was the way to go I'm surprised it took them this long to catch up so as far as this concerned great exhaust uh, the power delivery is a little bit less on the V4 but it is much quieter so, any sort of touring bike and uh, very, very quite reliable now. They've, they have really now stepped up to the mark. So this is a reliable exhaust for a touring engine, RT, some 225, RT 190, Casa Lambretta 185. This will uh, go very, very nicely on there. And uh, that's the way it goes. So let's have a look at the next one. We've now got the V4 Sport. So this one has had modified baffles inside they've changed the baffling to create more power so now it's actually got this one has i think more power than the v3 originally had but when you change the baffling here the exhaust gets noisier so what they've done is they've put this muffler on that fits underneath so you can't see it and it's then bracketed up onto the downpipe here and this reduces the noise as you can see, same sort of design with all the uh, the brazing on the brackets and everything. I've put this one together. I do not like, the only thing I don't like is where the uh, spring clips here fit on, right on the edge. Both corners here on the edge. This means you have to cut your cowling away. And I disagree with that. These springs should have been mounted under here, directly down, so you don't have to cut your cowling. That needs to be rectified by BGM, my advice. No good, no good. They need to be in behind, or one here on the front, and one here on the back, on a separate little there uh, clip. Here, out that far, you can't get your cowling on because it fells on the spring, so you have to cut the cowling away, and that reduces cooling. So this is going to go onto a bike, and we're going to test it. Or rather, the painted version is the one we're going to test. And so here it goes. Oh yeah, wow. 
So that's the painted version. The paint that they put on here, high temperature, it's very durable. I've uh, realized that on exhaust I've had that the paint does last quite well. The downpipe it will burn off, but on the uh, main body of the exhaust, it seems to be quite durable. Very high uh, temperature paint. And that is the, uh, the painted version. And now, let's go fit it on a bike. Okay, uh, now we've got to get around to fitting this. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're just going to have like a dry build for, of the exhaust first to make sure everything fits together correctly without putting any sealant on before we try to fit it on the bike. So it's always the best way to go. So we'll open this packet up, see what we've got inside. We've got our little, uh, nice little spring puller, which I've got anyway, so I won't bother taking that out of the packet. That can stay in. We've got the bracket, we've got the stub mount, and all the fixings that are here. Okay, it seems like we've got two sets of springs, which are short springs and long springs. Uh, we'll see which ones we fit. We've got the two brackets that go on to the clamp and the washers and spring washers for it and the two allen bolts. And this one I suspect is probably for the tailpipe. No, nope, that one's for the tailpipe. Ah, right, this is a lock nut for in here. Okay, here we go. That locks off in there, but we won't be needing that. So that's obsolete. That company looks like they've got the same kit for every one. So this is not used on this exhaust. So that is extra. We don't need that. So we're more or less there to go. So let's have a look at this, see if this fits in nicely and smoothly. It's a little bit tight. To be honest, uh, yep, that goes in nicely. Now, what I've noticed on these flanges from uh, BGM, if you put them on the barrel first and tighten them down fully, you can't get your downpipe on afterwards because it literally the pressure that you've tightened it down to overlaps the uh, the mouth of this. Uh, stub flange which is a bit surprising uh, I don't think they've changed anything so I'm expecting the same problem on this one so what you have to do is you have to put your stub mount on nipped up with your gasket and gasket sealant right then offer your downpipe onto it with some sealant on and then afterwards tighten down the bolts because if you tighten the bolts first you cannot get your stub mount back. You're, you can't get the downpipe on. Because what happens is, the pressure, it's so, such a, a clear, tight fit on the clearance, that the pressure overlates this uh, flange. Which it shouldn't do, should it really? But it does. I was very surprised, and it's happened on quite a few exhausts now, so I'm, up, I'm expecting it to be the same on this one as well. So okay, that fits, no problem. Let's have a look at this fit, see if this one's okay as well, before we start struggling on, on the bike. Yep, that goes on nicely, no problem. So, bracket. Now the bracket has got two plates. The bracket goes in here. This plate, the thinner plate, fits on the front. And you go Allen bolt, lock washer, flat washer, then plate. I'm just showing you how it goes. This is a dry build. And then the plate, the thicker plate with the threading goes on the back. And the same with the other screw. So it's spring washer, then flat washer, through that plate and onto the, and into the, uh, the retaining captured plate at the back. So we haven't tightened it up. So you've got movement here to uh, forward, backwards, 
so you've got a fair bit of movement there to be able to set this up okay so um, I'm not going to fit the uh, towel pipe on now because I'm going to want to fit the downpipe first then fit this onto the downpipe on the bike it seems to be the easiest way to do it you could try to put it all together and offer it up as one but you're going to find it almost impossible to fit so first of all we're going to fit the downpipe and the stub manifold right this is going to be our test bike for the day uh, we've got a nice beautiful series 2 here and at the moment it's fitted with a Ancelotti and a 195 kit so we're going to give this a little test first of all we're going to do ourselves a sound test so let's get it warmed up Okay, I've been and got my sound meter, so uh, it's basically my phone with a decibel meter on it. So from here, from this distance, with about two and a half meters, I reckon it's about 84 decibels. So we're going to go a little closer. <coughs> Okay, this gives me an average, it actually gives you a minimum, maximum and an average. So it's giving me an average of 86 decibels. Okay, right. Let's check this out and uh, have a little test drive, see how it goes. Probably don't even need the choke. Yeah, come on, it's got... Right, okay, mounting of this flange and the springs. Now, everybody's putting the springs on the outside here, as uh, BGM have designed it, like this. But when you do that, your cowling has to be completely cut away to stop it failing on the springs. So, we're not going to go down that road, we're going to completely change it. We're going to mount our springs like this, so that means I'm going to notch this manifold here, so the spring sits in here flush. So once it's in as well, and you bolt it up, it can't come out. It's then a captive spring. So that way, we don't have to cut away the cowling. The cowling, the original cowling can fit and maximize the capture of our air in the cowling, so we keep the engine cool and we don't lose exhaust gases, um, lose air cooling down past the exhaust. Right, so we're going to notch this and create our captive spring system. Okay, what I've done is we've dremeled into this on these two positions, so now they're flush. So you, you, you you, your exhaust spring is flush now, so when you bolt that up to your manifold, no problems with the springs getting in, in the way. The spring now pulls straighter on both sides, and it doesn't obstruct your cowling. So you don't have to cut your cowling away, I don't like cutting cowlings away. So that's my modification, if anybody wants to copy it and you like that, you're welcome to do it. If BGM want to copy it, then it's up to them. Okay, this is now the fitting. What we've done so far is we've removed the old exhaust. To do so, we take off both floorboards and remove the shroud. Rear shocker off and drop the engine down. That way, you slide your shroud off and you, and you get your exhaust off. So, what we're going to do first is this is BGM exhaust. We've already put sealant and the gasket is on there. 
So we've got a brand new gasket with sealant already fitted on the barrel. So then we're just going to fit the downpipe straight on without the shroud because we can bend the downpipe around and fit the shroud in a minute. So I've got washers and a spring washer. And my brass nut. So get that one on first, and then I'll go around the other side and fit the other one. Now we can't torque these up because you can't get a torque wrench on. So it's just nip them up as, as you would a good solid uh, fit. I reckon this should be about 12 uh, pounds feet or something like that. So an experienced guy can sort of estimate that. So once we've run this and got it hot, we're going to recheck these. These nuts. always recheck these afterwards when your engine's got hot, and just give them another little nip up. Because with the heat, they tend to uh, the gasket tends to squash just that little bit more, and then they're loose again. So always re-nip them when they, when it's hot. Okay, we are on. So what we're going to do is swivel the downpipe back a bit out of the way and then slide our cowling on and hopefully now the springs don't touch touch wood whether I'm proven right or wrong there we go on it goes so that's with the standard cowling not having to trim away anything okay so uh, it didn't fit straight on so unfortunately, we're going to have to trim a little bit. But the one spring on this side only needs a small amount out there and just this corner of the cowling off here to clear the other spring. Nowhere near what you would have had to take out if you put the springs in the original position. You end up with half the cowling missing and a whacking great gaping hole to lose all your precious cooling air down out at the bottom of your cover. So we're going to trim that now and that one and then we're going to have another little dry run and see if it fits on. Right so we've uh, we've trimmed that out for the springs where they touch and we've put a little bit of touch up on there. I don't have the uh, Volvo uh, colour but never mind. I'm sure it's not going to be noticed right underneath by the exhaust. So we'll just drop this on now and we can bolt it all up. So we'll just put the bolts in loose for now. Then we'll go around the other side and put the other bolts in. Okay, so we've put the two screws in around the other side and this one in here, all loose, all three should be loose when you put it together. Don't just tighten one up and then try to get the others in because you can't get them in. So you put them all in loose by hand first and then when all three are in, then you can continue to tighten up. And I normally tighten up the big one first and then the two small ones. So we'll whiz this one up. Up to my usual torque. Yeah, that was it, about there. Right, now I'll whiz around the other side and tighten the other two up. Okay, now you can see how our cowling is and how the spring fits neatly and nicely that's our modification so it's not coming from back here anymore it's actually tight in on the uh, on the exhaust and we don't have to cut all our cowling away and it's the same on the other side nice and neat 
Right, the BGM video was all made possible by a company called Mad Scooters in, in Marbella. They were the suppliers of the exhaust for me, so I could do this fantastic video for you guys and the, the review. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. But I want to thank all my subscribers and everybody out there, and a special thanks to my buddy there, Dave Rickman, who sent me this sticker. New Forest Lambrettas. That is proudly going straight onto my Red Rat Lambretta. And we're going to put it on now. That's just going to get that on the inside of the leg shield there. There she blows. It's not sticking very well. Dave, your stickers don't stick, mate. Anyway, it's on there. Maybe I'll have to re-stick it. Speak with the company about the glue. <laughs> but never mind, I'm sure I can get it to stick somehow. You know what? Araldite. That always does the trick. Right, thanks everybody. Let's carry on with the video. Right, yes, we're doing a little modification on this one now as well, because this is a Series 2 Spanish model, so it hasn't got the fixing underneath the engine casing. So, as you're aware on the last video, we drilled and tapped a new hole on one of the uh, engine lugs that's underneath there. So we've had to move the bracket on this, we're coming a bit closer, so we've moved it from the original point and now it's in, it's just tacked at the moment and I've checked it, double checked it, tacked it, rechecked it and it lines up beautifully so now we're going to fully weld it. You have to do this on the Series 2 models without the bolt underneath. If you don't, there's no other support except this bracket and this bracket, even though they've reinforced it, I'm not going to trust that it's going to fail. It's going to fail or it's going to rip the studs out the, out the casing. One, something's going to go somewhere. So you do need this extra support. It's really, really important. So we'll carry on and do a little bit of welding. One side, now to the side. Check to the side. There it is, nicely welded on, both sides, so uh, this should now be fairly substantial and do the trick. Time to get it on boy, <laughs> let's see, can't wait to get this thing started and see what it sounds like. This is the first one we've had so uh, it's really interesting to see what this is going to sound like. Is it going to sound more like an expansion or like a box? We don't know yet. I can't wait to see. <laughs> okay, uh, we just slid, slid it all on. We've had this on a couple of times. You haven't seen it on the video, but I did have to modify the hole slightly. I don't like anything go on, going on that's under stress. Everything has to fit sweetly. So take your time when you fit an exhaust. Make sure that every bolt goes through nice and easily. You don't have to force or push anything. 
should all go together nicely. So we've elongated them a little bit back because it wasn't quite lining up how I wanted it to. So basically, we can now just lift this up into position like that. We've got our bolts already done here, ready to go through. We've got the plate for on the back. I'm just going to put a dab of Loctite in that so when it goes on it doesn't fall off even though we've got it has got the spring washers on here so that's supposed to stop it but I like to be sure to be sure let's get this through first so they go through nice and easily or should do All right, let's put our plate on the back, get one started, okay, get the other one located. Okay, now I don't fully tighten that up yet. We now put the ones on here, on this bracket, and the one underneath, all loose. So we've got the one that goes underneath now. It's got Loctite already on it. You don't want the exhaust to touch the casing in any place whatsoever. Make sure that when you bolt it up, everything's got clearance. So there you go. That one's almost there. Now we're going to put these two on. Put the washers and some nylocks. the two springs on the downpipe between the can and the downpipe and to mount the can underneath so we'll put a little bit more sealant on that now the gasket's already under there sat on there with sealant on it already so you get two nuts with it, with serrated edges. They shouldn't actually uh, come loose, but tiny dab of Loctite never hurt nothing. Not much, just a tiny bit. So that goes towards the outside. We've got our clamp as well. Now now we've got to get underneath and fit it on. Oh no, there's our gasket. Now we're going to tighten these up.
Okay, they're on. Let's finish off this Allen key. Um, I'm going to let you have a look under here in a minute to see what it's like. Okay, we're going to give you a look around now. So this is what it looks like on the outside. Now we'll sweep underneath. Right, the grand finale, or part of the grand finale anyway. This is where we actually start it up and see what it sounds like. I have been waiting for this moment now. I'm dying to see what this sounds like. I'm hoping it sounds beautiful. Uh, let's pray. Come on, baby. Right, we shouldn't need the choke now if it's already running. I'm just talking and I'm on 62 decibels, 80 decibels. I'm going to have to reset it. Okay, we'll get it running first. Okay, last time we did the, uh, the test from about a metre and a half back uh, on tip over. And we'll see what this one is now. Okay, this one, it is a little louder than the, uh, than the Ancelotti. This is like uh, 88 decibels on tick over. But I think the Ancelotti was on like 84, and the other, and my BGM was on 85. So this is 88. There's not really much in it. They're almost the same. So, pretty good. We need to go for a test drive. So, uh, that'll do for now. Let's go for a test drive. Now I did go for a test drive earlier on the when it had the Ancelotti on, but the camera was on the wrong settings and all the footage was rubbish. So uh, it's a bit of a shame. But uh, here we go. Let's get this one out. I'm 
looks a lot, eh? actually seems to increase as the, as the revs go up you get that little bit more extra boost very nice okay I suppose we better put all the floorboards and stuff back on it and uh, maybe get it, get it on the dual carriageway and do a, a jet test on it but it seems pretty good nice and smooth all the way through very nice of course it's only running a 24 mil carb <laughs> but it goes well it goes like a 28 right okay we've gone we've gone from this uh, Ancelotti exhaust performance is okay bracketing not so good but it does give you that nice original uh, Lambretta sound but it really lacks in power. Uh, it cuts at about 6,000, then uh, that's it. It's just hitting a brick wall. It's not really revving much past that. So yeah, that is off. As you can see, we've got the new BGM Sport on. Sounds throaty, pulls really nice, revs right round, it's coming. I haven't fully revved it, but it's gone past seven and a half thousand. No problem at all, really. Uh, it seems to have more power in the peak than mid, so it does actually react a little bit more uh, like an expansion chamber. Not like a proper expansion chamber, but it's got that little bit of an edge on the top of the uh, peak power that other, cl other clubmans don't seem to have. It's really nice. Uh, hope you enjoyed this review and uh, putting it together hope that's going to be helpful hope you like my uh, channel don't forget to subscribe and share with all your friends see you later have a good day <laughs>